Seen a fig tree afar off having leaves. He came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. I want to talk to you for the next few moments from this thought in our minds. Ain't no future in your front. Ain't no future in your front. Uncle Johnny, I've learned over time they have told us that what you have to do is fake it till you make it. And the reality is a lot of times we, we can fake it till we make it because most times nobody's really checking for anything authentic. The problem then becomes when you have a situation as they encountered with Jesus. Jesus, I'll give you some backdrop. Jesus was traveling with his disciples, Grandma, and they were on their way to Jerusalem yet again. Uh, they said that they were coming from Bethany, and while they were coming from Bethany on their way back to Jerusalem, Jesus just so happened to see a fig tree. Now, you got to understand the thing about this fig tree because uh, this was about March or April when Jesus was traveling with his disciples. Now, the issue then is that the fig tree was in bloom or was seeming to be in bloom. But Mark said that this was not the proper time for figs to be in bloom. And so then I had to do a little investigation because I don't know nothing about fig trees. But one thing I did find out is that with fig trees, fig trees are not in full bloom till about June. But yet and still, there are some budding that happens around March and April where the leaves start to come, but they are not in full bloom till about June. Scripture lets us know that Jesus on his way back, Grandma, he was hungry, which lets us know that Jesus himself was touched with the same feelings that we have, which lets us know that Jesus understands what it is to be human. He was hungry. He wanted something to eat. He needed something something to satisfy the human side of who he was. He needed something to satisfy his humanity because sometimes there are things that you must do to ease and deal with your fleshly pains so that you can operate in your divine assignment. Talk, boy, I'm going to preach while I can. There are some things you have to do in order to make sure that your physical body is in good shape to handle the spiritual assignment that you have. Scripture says that Jesus went to the tree now off now watch this though it says he happily in other words he happened to see it he wasn't looking for the tree because he knew that it was not time for the tree to be in bloom but he just so happened to see the tree scripture says afar off which means that when Jesus got to Bethany when Jesus got to where he was he starts surveying the land to see what was around him point number one no matter where you go this year you need to start surveying the land you need to see what's going on around you because some of the stuff around you looks good till you get to it, talk boy. And once Jesus got to the tree, here now is where the problem comes in because Jesus gets to the tree. Mark told us that it was not time for the figs to be in bloom, but when Jesus gets to the tree, he started looking for fruit because the tree represented that it was ready to be used. So Jesus' expectation of the tree was well-founded. Well. But when he got to the tree, he realized that what the tree said that it had, it really didn't have. The tree was then guilty of false advertising. And I want you to know that this year as believers, as the children of God, we cannot become guilty of false advertising. We cannot become guilty of being leafy and looking green, looking as if people are able to come and pour from us. And then when they come to partake of what it is we have, we ain't got nothing to give. Okay, y'all looking at me funny. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The fact that the tree was not yet in full bloom made it worse for the tree. 
I ain't gonna be long today because this kind of tree, again, you got to understand it forms its leaves first. Yeah. Then it should appear that the fruit comes after. What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm saying that we ought to see your maturity as a believer first. And then when we deal with you, we ought to be able to get some fruit from your maturity after. But the reality is we got a lot of folks that appear to be mature. Okay, okay, y'all going to make me work today, but y'all going to make me work. We get a lot of people that appear to be mature, and then when it's time to pull from you, only thing you can offer them is a drink and a smoke because you ain't got nothing else. Okay, 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 okay. This might, might, this might not make you shout today. Uh, we, we did that last week. It's, I said, so, 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 so the tree, by putting on its foliage before its time, was proclaiming itself to be more superior than any other tree. Let me give it to you again. Because it produced its foliage before its time, it appeared to be more superior than the other trees around. Just because you've been around a long time does not make you superior to those that's still struggling. Because the reality is when people come to pull on you, are they getting with thus saith the Lord or are they getting your frustration and your attitude? Are they getting with thus saith the Lord or are they getting what it is that you're supposed to be doing but you're really not doing? Come on, this, this made a striking symbol of an average everyday hypocrite. Who not content with the appearing of being as good as other people usually puts on the appearance that they're better than other people. And see, I, I, don't, I don't have an issue with you struggling as a believer. I don't have an issue with you every now and then not always hitting the mark. But I have an issue with folk who act like they've always been there. You can't act like you fell out of Jesus' lap yesterday because you got to understand that your unfruitfulness causes issues for Christ when he comes to pull from your tree. Because when you present to him that you're ready to be used, when you present to him that you're ready for the benefit of the body and he comes to pull off of you and ain't got nothing to pull from you, the scripture lets us know just like he did with the tree, he cursed the tree. No, 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 get this. Because he cursed the tree in private. But the disciples heard it. What are you saying? I'm trying to get you to understand that when Jesus comes to you, he's not coming to you in front of everybody. He's just going to slide up to you. But when he gets up to you and you ain't got nothing to produce, then when he cursed you, it's going to be done. Because he told the tree that hereafter from this day forward shall no man eat of you. In other words, if you keep going through this life as a believer and not producing what Christians ought to be producing in this day and time, then God's going to end up having to curse you. And at some point, people ain't going to be able to benefit from you. You do know that we're here for the benefit of those that are around us. It's not that God is blooming you so that you can just look good. He's blooming you so that you can feed somebody else. That, that, so, 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 so that you can help somebody else get through with your testimony. So you can help somebody else see him even in the midst of your trial and your testing. Your blooming is so important that I'm ready for you to see me just as. Understand that the unfruitful is something that this year cannot be tolerated. I need y'all to get my mic together. Fruitfulness, unfruitfulness in this year cannot be tolerated. Matthew 3 and 10 says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Well, I'm sorry, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and passed into the fire. So your neighbor say, I ain't trying to be cut down. And so you have to understand this now. Now, now when Jesus cursed the tree, he gave the tree a divine curse. And that curse is when God has started with you, you will no longer be able to prosper. him to get. 
And so we have to understand that as God comes to pour from us in this year, when God comes to partake of us, when God is looking to use us, our hypocrisy has got to be put in check. It is no longer acceptable for us to say one thing and do something else. It is no longer acceptable for us to come in church and shout, but then shake it in the club. It's unacceptable for us to come and take communion and then drink some 40 after church. It's unacceptable for us to love you this time and then cuss you out tomorrow it's unacceptable for you to lift your hands in here and then slap me on my face it's unacceptable I want you to understand your tree must bear fruit and this year God saying that your hypocrisy is not going to be accepted we, we have to get to the place where we understand that Jesus prohibited the tree from ministering anymore to the wants of man what are you saying, preacher? I want you to understand until you start getting proof or when you, until you start growing some fruit to go with your leaves, your ministry is about to stop. Hmm, okay, y'all looking at me funny, but I want you to understand that in this day and time, we cannot afford to continue to go along making the church look bad. We cannot afford to continue making Christ look bad because we have a lot of Christians who say they are Christians, but what you see in them does not exemplify Christian behavior. It, it does not exemplify Christian Lifestyle, And I want you to understand that in this day and time, it's not about being perfect. It's just all about being real. It's all about being honest. It's all about letting folk know, no, nah, I ain't always been where I am. No, nah, I ain't always had it together. No, nah, I ain't always been. I ain't always had the A in the game. No, nah, I ain't always been able to speak with tongues and speak. You know, I ain't always been able to do all this good church stuff. It took me some time to get here. It took me a little while to grow. It took me some lumps and some bumps. It took me to go through some things to get to the place now where I can realize and understand that God truly is good but I want you to know that you're not going to start out where I am it takes time and, and, and we have a lot of Christians who are fronting they are presenting lessons that show how immature their professions really are. Because it's mature Christians, grandma, who can struggle and still profess Christ. It's, it's, those un, it's those immature believers who have professions that don't line up with they walk because you figure that as long as you tell somebody what you're doing, that ain't nobody watching what you're doing. And I've come to tell you that people don't care about what you say. They care about what you do. People used to tell me, do as I say and not as I do. No, I'm going to do as you do because as you do really means what you say because no nobody care about what you you saying you can tell me anything and then get on the phone and tell somebody else something different but your walk is your walk your action is your action and you can't change your action and if if in fact you want to be a real believer then your action must match your confession but you cannot confess to be with Christ and then everything you do is outside of who he is I've come to learn that we do good to pay attention to the woes of Christ. We have become so caught up in the blessings of Christ that we miss the woes of Christ. See, we want to tell everybody how Christ blesses. We want to tell them how he fed the 5,000 and then the 4,000. We want to tell them how he opened blinded eyes. We want to tell them how he stopped funeral processions. We want to tell them how he raised Lazarus from the dead. We want to tell them how he'll be a bridge over troubled water. We want to tell them how he'll be a mother to the motherless. We want to tell them he'll be a friend to the friendless. We want to tell them he's a father to the fathers. We want to tell them he's a lawyer in the courtroom. We tell them he's a doctor in the sick room. We tell them that he's all the things that they'll ever need but we don't tell them that there is a wall side and the wall side comes here in Mark chapter 11 because when Jesus looks at you he should be able to pull from you everything that has been planted in you and when he gets to you he ought to have fruit but there's no fruit so so, so, so the reality is, the reality is, and they talked about it in Sunday school this morning how it is that sometimes we can look like everybody else 
because you got to remember now when he was going from uh, uh, Bethany back to Jerusalem, there was other trees around. Well. Every tree was either in bloom or wasn't in bloom. Mm -hmm. All the rest of the trees was around. But Jesus didn't deal with the other trees. And I come to let you know that when Jesus starts dealing with you, he ain't trying to hear about what the tree next to you was doing because the tree next to you was not your focus and it ain't your concern. Your walk with God has to be your walk. Your concern with God has to be your concern. And you've got to realize that when you come to the place where you are in full bloom, what benefit are you to the body if they can't get nothing from you? Here, here, here's the thing. Question was asked, what does it mean to be a front and Christian? Well, to be a front and Christian, Uncle Johnny, are people who follow the sign, but they have nothing of substance. A front and Christian is a person who has opinion, but not faith. A front, a front and Christian is a person who understands the creed, but don't have credence. A fronting Christian is one who has the walk without any feeling. A fronting Christian is one that have regrets, but there's no repentance. A fronting Christian is one who has resolve, but no action. You've got to make sure that this year, what you profess to others, what we show to others as the body of baptized believers, we got something that's going to line up with what it is we saying. It is time out for us coming to church, doing the same old thing, lifting our hands, run a little bit. We got to get beyond the song, sermon, and the shout. People want to see real ministry. People want to see real actionable ministry they want to see the eyes being open they want to see the lane being made to walk when they roll up in here when they come up in here on a Sunday morning they came in because we was green we had some leads but they leave out trying to figure out why I ain't getting nothing you got to make sure that you got some fruit in your life because the fruit in your life is what gives glory to God the fruit in your life is what let people to know that God is able to do People are now looking for an experience with God. But when they get to you, they don't see anything that resembles God. But you're green. Your leaves are in full bloom. What semblance of God do we see? That means your conversation can't be like everybody else's conversation. And see, we, we got to understand, we got to understand, while there are many people who have become guilty of blooming out of season because we're all showing no substance. There's many people who have become guilty because I got a ministry, I got a call, and so it's my time, so I'm going to step out there. And when you step out there, people are looking to see what they know a fig tree is supposed to produce. When you step out there and say that you are a believer, when you step out and say that you've been called of God, they're looking to see the things that resemble people who have been called by God. And when they see that you ain't producing nothing that shows you've been called by God they ain't got an issue with your tree they got an issue with your God Come on, see if, if if I have a a orange tree in my backyard and the leaves on my tree begin to grow well. and the leaves on my tree hang over into my neighbor's yard my neighbor ain't mad at the tree because my neighbor understands the tree is just growing like a tree. <laughs> you missing me? The, 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 the tree is just doing what a tree does. And the, the more a tree grows, the more a tree spreads. And you know, the tree done spread now. My oranges is in his property, but he don't want my oranges in his property, but he noticed that my tree has oranges on it. Now, he tells me you need to come and you need to start pruning your tree. What does pruning your tree mean? Pruning your tree is making full proof of your call. It's making full proof of your ministry. It's studying to show that self-approved, the work 
workmen need not be ashamed of his works rightly dividing the word of truth and when you start pruning your tree it is something about your tree that looks good to your neighbor and your neighbor's gonna start asking you I know you had to prune your tree but is it possible if I can get an orange off of your tree because the oranges on your tree look better than the oranges I can get from the store what are you saying preacher I'm saying as you are growing and as you are professing Christ when you stand up and say this is where God has planted me this is what God has called me to do can somebody pull from your fruit does your fruit look good enough that makes somebody want some of what you got I, I, I ran into a, a couple who good friends of mine and they told me Elder John that they were starting a church I said okay God bless you and and in starting the church, I asked them, what's your pastor say? They, they, they said, well, my pastor knew what was on my heart. I said, but that's not telling me what your pastor said. They began to tell me, Elder John, that what well, pastor told me, they don't think I'm ready. I said, okay. Well, then they said, but we starting in February. Now, here lies the issue of leafy Christians. Because you preach a couple of sermons and you lead a couple of ministries does not mean that God has released you to start a church and when God has somebody already in place that's responsible for tilling your soil if you uproot a plant and I ain't no gardener but I know that if you uproot a plant too soon and you plant it somewhere else the plant nine times out of ten doesn't take root and the leaves end up dying what are you saying? We got to be careful. Although we have a call, although we have a commission not to uproot ourselves and move too soon, we got to make sure that we're not presenting something that we're really not ready to do because what will happen is we will end up dying before our season or God will end up having to curse us. And when God curses you, he's not going to necessarily kill you, but he's going to leave you as an example for everybody else to see what it looks like when you go ahead of God's plan. Watch this. Jesus cursed the tree all because it showed that it was ready but had nothing to give to meet the needs it was designed for. God has issue with hypocrisy and uselessness in the sight of the master will only invite disaster to your life. And so I've come to encourage you to make sure that as you're traveling throughout this year, as you're moving throughout your ministry, as you sing and as you're standing on the door, as you're preaching, as you're greeting folk, you've got to make sure that your leaves are in full bloom. But when they're in full bloom, you got to be in a position to have some fruit so people can pull from what it is you have. Stop telling everybody how much you love God and you don't love everybody else. You've got to make sure that the love for God that you have is translated in how it is you treat people how it is you talk to people how it is you entreat people invite that person to dinner you don't normally talk to and give that person a ride you don't normally ride with why because our fruit has to match our confession and God has gotten to the place now where nobody wants to check the tree And then we don't deal with the tree when the tree don't produce. We just say it's a useless tree. No, stop talking about me if I ain't produce, but help me learn how to produce. And, and, and this season, we have to get to the place where we start bearing one another's burdens. We got to get to the place where we start helping one another succeed and be examples for Christ. Because I want you to know, even if you fall and I don't fall, because you fail, I fail. 
We are a family. We are the body of baptized believers and we are accountable one to the other. So if you ain't bearing fruit, it's my job to help ensure that you start bearing fruit. So if I know when you go home, you going back home doing the same old thing you was doing before you got to church and I got to come and talk to you because I got to make sure that your home life matches your church life because all too often our home life don't match our church life and that's why we can't get the folk in the home saved because they understand that who we are at home is really who we are. So Jesus deals with the tree. Now, now, now the thing that got me is that Jesus didn't go up to the tree and tell the folk why he was going to the tree. Because the scripture says he happily, in other words, he by happenstance, he just so happened to see it because he really wasn't looking for it. But the tree was presenting itself saying, hey, come over here and pull on me. The, 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 the tree got his attention. He wasn't looking for the tree, but because the tree presented itself the way Jesus knew that the tree ought to look when it was time for the tree to be a benefit because the tree presented itself that way, Jesus just so happened to go over there. Scripture says, hoping that he could get something. And his hoping that he could get something, Grandma, was not because he thought that the tree wouldn't be in bloom. No, his hoping to get something was that he knew because it was in bloom, most people would have been pulling from the tree. And so he thought maybe the tree might be empty because it has met the needs of the people. But no, the tree didn't meet the needs of the people. The tree was just meeting his own selfish agenda. Watch, watch what he says. So, so the text says his disciples heard it. Now, Elder John, many commentary writers suggest that this was a twofold thing. That it could have been a literal cursing to give the disciples warning for what happened for being non producers. But then it could have been a parable warning to let Israel know, or to let the disciples know, the doom and gloom that was pending Israel. Either way it go, not producing is bad for the believer. Because in this world of alternate religions, in this world of different cults, and in this world of all these other ideas that exalt themselves above Christ, when you stand up and say that you are a believer, when you stand up and say that you've been fire baptized and blood bought, when you stand up to say I'm on the Lord's side unequivocally and I'm not changing, when you stand up to make those bold confessions, people are looking for you to produce what it is a Christian ought to be producing. And when you don't produce what Christians ought to produce, even in the middle of of adversity your tree has no fruit what people know of believers are based on what they've seen other believers do and so if they never see you do what believers do they'll never think that you're a believer what are you saying what are you saying I'm coming I'm coming to a close I got to go last thing when Jesus comes to you he's coming to you because unfruitlessness and hypocrisy will not be tolerated. Jesus intentionally spoke loud enough for his disciples to hear. Which means that when he went to the tree, he went by himself. But because he had become so frustrated, I mean, here it is. You've been saved for the last 30 years, man. And I mean, God has done some wonderful things for you and you still cussing. You, 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 you still fussing. You still got issues with belief and faith. You know, he says, I prefer that you either be cold or hot and not lukewarm because if you lukewarm, I'm going to have to spit you out of my mouth because I don't like the taste of the lukewarm church. What are you saying? God prefers that you either going to be hot for him or you're going to be cold for him. He don't want you vacillating between the two. And in this day and time in 2020, we can't vacillate between the two. Either we're going to be on the Lord's side or we ain't going to be on the Lord's side. But no matter what I've made up in my mind that I'm going to stand for the Lord. I'm going to preach his word. I'm going to live as best I can. I'm going to be the best example that I can. Why? Because when people come to pull from me, I need them to be able to pull some fruit. I need them to be able to pull some encouragement. I need them to pull some long suffering. I need them to pull some joy. I need them to pull some peace. I need them to pull some happiness. I need them to pull some hope. I need them to pull what they need that will help them get closer to the God that we serve. 
I need them to pour what they need that'll cause them to pray a little while longer, that'll cause them to run a little faster, that'll cause them to serve a little harder. I need them to pour from me what's going to help them stay grounded on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Time out for fronting as Christians. Tell your neighbor, go on and be. Go on and be. You, you saved, be saved. <laughs> you love God, love him. I ain't saying that you're going to always get it right. But God takes joy in your trying to get it right. <laughs> see, you ain't got to always be perfect. <laughs> but we just need to see that you trying. We just need to see that when you have some regret and you move to repentance. We need to see that when you know you've messed up, you ain't trying to down nobody else. Because they messed up, you concentrating on yourself. Because I got to get myself together. There's some things about me I don't even like. And I don't need nobody to recount to me my failures and my sin because I know them. I was there when I did them. And matter of fact, they hurt me more than they hurt you but I want you to know that this year I've made it up in my mind that I'm going to be a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that shall not be moved and when I start to bloom you're going to be able to pull some fruit from me you're going to be able to see something that resembles Christ because our mission this year is Matthew 28 go ye therefore into all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost and teaching them whatsoever I've commanded you what are you saying it's time to bloom when I read this I was curious because there was a phrase in the King James that says and he answered the tree and I was under the impression well. that him answering the tree was because the tree asked him a question well. that we wasn't privy to I found out well. he wasn't answering in that form but him answering the tree simply meant that he said to the tree. He spoke to the tree's condition. Well. And so my question then became, God, how do we avoid being spoken to like this? Well. Because by all appearances, and I'm through, the tree was looking good. But the reality is, it wasn't producing. Well. And I come to tell you that just looking good as a Christian this year is not enough. We've got to be in the place where we start producing after the walk we say we have. So this year, tell somebody we ain't fronting no more this year. No, you need to tell somebody else you told the wrong one. Tell them, we ain't going to be fronting this year. This year, I'm going to make it my business to live a good life. I'm going to make it my business to try as hard as I can to produce fruit. Because at the end of the day, when you have to stand before judgment, God's not going to ask you about the tree next to you. Sister Karen ain't concerned about your neighbor's tree. He wants to know about your tree. He wants to know how many did you lead to Christ? He, he's not concerned about your frustration. He ain't concerned about the attitude, no. Because he wants to know in the midst of all of that, was I not still good? In the midst of all of that, was I not still God? And if you can say, yes, you were still God in the midst of everything that I was going through, the question then becomes, why didn't you produce? Where was your fruit? And so this year, I want to push you to be producers. Make sure you got some fruit. I, I know it's Black History Month. That's why we got this wonderful display. And we talk about what all those who came before us did. It's wonderful what they did. But my question is, what are you doing? 
What are you doing to push the cause forward? What are you doing to push the message of Christ? What are you doing to help evangelize? What are you doing to help witness? What are you doing to help save souls? What are you doing to help to get the mission accomplished? Stop talking about what everybody ain't doing, what everybody should be doing. What are you doing? Are you producing? Don't worry about your neighbor. Are you producing? Are you coming to help? We don't want to hear you complaining no more. We don't want to hear you fussing no more. Are you coming to help? Jesus cursed the tree because the tree tree didn't produce although the tree said it was ready don't give the appearance that you're ready to do something you're not ready to do because the reality is Uncle John you're going to get cursed and it's one thing to be cursed and wiped off the scene it's another thing to be cursed and left as a memorial for everybody to use as a reminder of what not to do. Because the scripture says that when the disciples came back by the tree, they saw that it had withered. <laughs> I want you to know that sometimes they're gonna have to do a loop around. <laughs> you, 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 no, Jesus, don't be upset at what ain't happening now because you know, you just got to do a loop around. And, and sometimes when you come back around, if you get your mind right, when you come back around and you give God the real praise, when you come back around and you give God the real glory, I guarantee you, you're going to actually start producing some fruit. But you can't produce what you not, what, what's not in you. It has to be in you to produce. And so do you really want him? If you do, then you are going to produce after he is, if he really has hold of you. Tell your neighbor, don't be like the tree. Oh, we like the tree. I done learned now how to tell folk no. I done learned now how to turn down stuff. Because I done had some folk offer me some stuff. Man, I could make you this. No. Nah. Ain't my season for that. I had a guy in my inbox not too long ago. He said, man, I see Bishop on you. I said, well, praise the Lord. He said, just let me know when you're ready. I said, ready for what? He said, I'll make you a bishop. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This ain't my season for that. We have to get out of chasing stuff because it looks good. And trying to appeal to other people to be accepted into groups and clubs. No, this is not the season for that. This is the season where we must stand alone and do the work of the church. What is the work of the church? The work of the church, and we're going to be hitting it all year, is to evangelize. It is to witness. It is to lead people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is to advance the kingdom of heaven here in the earth realm. And if we ain't doing that, then we ain't producing fruit. I have more people talking to me about their pastor and about what their churches are doing, but I never hear them talk about the evangelistic outreaches. There was a church, and I'm through. Doors of the church are open. There was a church uh, some years ago, Elder John, and they was, they was bragging because they had over $100,000 in their benevolent fund. The benevolent fund is meant to help people. But here it is, they're bragging because they got over $100,000 in the benevolent fund. And I begin thinking to myself, how is that a good thing that you got all of this and you in the Pope community? Which said that they were green, but they ain't had no fruit. Because any church, Deacon Pete, that brags about having over $100,000 in the benevolent fund ain't helping nobody. Our benevolent fund stay empty. We ain't got a whole lot, but boy, they sure come get what we got. We are producers. How, do you, how can you say we're producers? We got SOS. 
We got the clothing closet. We, we give away food. We have fruit. And I want you to understand that you cannot get hung up in numbers because as long as we are doing what God has called us to do, then it is God's responsibility to take care of everything else. And I want you to get focused on doing the work. As long as you do the work and honor God, Brother Barnett, in doing the work, then God's going to honor you in everything else. God's going to make sure that your cupboard is always full. God's going to always make sure that you got some peace and some good health but you got to make sure that your tree got some fruit on it so I want you to understand that this year we're going to be producers every time you see us we're going to be doing something that's leading somebody to Christ that's pointing somebody to the saving knowledge of who he is that's strengthening somebody's relationship because it's time out for us just being green Christians where we look good but ain't no benefit. Where we're coming in and we're just useless. This year we've got to do more. And I want you to know that you can do it because at some point you were doing it. <laughs> how, how, can, how do you know I was doing it? The reason I know you was doing it at some point is because you're still here. The church is 74 years old because the church has some fruit on it. Okay, okay, okay. Everything about Samaritan had fruit, and that's why after 74 years, the leaves are still strong. The branches are still strong, and the leaves are still blooming, but we just can't get so comfortable because God allowed us to get here thinking that we don't have to do some work to go even further. We got to start tilling the ground and pruning the tree so that new things can grow, and so that we can always make sure that in this community, not only do we say we're the lighthouse, but we actually be the lighthouse. As we're moving into church anniversary, starting next week, Ask yourself, am I producing? What have I produced to help Samaritan grow? Is my gifts and my talents being used to its fullness to help Samaritan grow? Because when people look at Samaritan, we don't want them to see it as any other church. But we want them when they come in here and they look at our leaves, they see we got some fruit on our leaves. That we, we got some joy, we got some excitement, we got some love, we got some peace, we got some people who ain't always been there, but we'll help you when you get stuck to let you know that where you are, you ain't got to stay because I was there too and God got me up out of it and now God has me here just waiting on you so I can help you get up out of it because I want you to know you ain't ever got to stay in your sin or die in your sin. There, Christ died for you, he came back for you and he's coming back for you, but we just got to make sure that you understand that once he poured you out that's not the end of the story you still got work to do so we want you to produce we want you to be producers this year I'm gonna produce I'm, I'm, I'm gonna produce I'm gonna produce every matter of fact I started producing on Wednesday because cable man came to my house and I started evangelizing to him because he saw me studying and he started asking me questions about the Bible because you know he didn't heard all these different religions and he trying to figure out he said I just want to know what the truth is so we sat down and we opened up the scripture at my table and we went through the word of God it took him an extra hour and a half to get done with the job but it was all well worth it why because he said on Sunday I'm going to church Producing fruit does not always mean they're going to come to your church. But you just want to make sure that they start chasing after him after their encounter with you. That's all it's about. It's about winning the loss. It's about reclaiming those who was once apart. But don't be a fruitless tree. We don't care how well you can articulate scripture if you ain't going to live it. It doesn't matter how melodious your voice is if you ain't going to use it. It doesn't matter how, 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 how well you can read blueprint plans and you ain't going to help us expand. You got to produce. You got to produce. There may be one today who do not know Jesus in the parting of your sin. 